Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Before we begin today's daily quiz, there are a few important announcements for you. First, on 24th of April, we have a one-hour workshop in which we will be discussing with you how to best use the last 40 days before the prelims 2022 examination. This is the most crucial phase for all of those who are planning to write the 2022 prelims examination. Do join for this workshop. The link to register for the workshop is given in the description of the video. Second, it is Friday tomorrow. That means time for the next explained session. The next explained session that is tomorrow live on the YouTube channel of Baiju's IAS will be coming at 8 p.m. where we will be discussing the topic Indian monsoon prediction and what techniques exactly are used to predict the Indian monsoon. Then we also have episode number four coming up tomorrow of the prelims 2022 hack series in which I am discussing mnemonics of how to remember important information about the prelims examination. In tomorrow's episode, I will be discussing with you important mnemonics and facts about geography and environment. Do join in for that as well. That will be released at 3 p.m. on the YouTube channel of Baidu's IES tomorrow. Now, let's begin today's daily quiz with question number one. Consider the following statements with regards to Ayush. Number one. In 2014, the Department of Ayush under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare became a ministry on its own called the Ministry of Ayush. Second, the Ministry of Ayush runs an e oshadi portal for online licensing of Ayurveda, Siddh, Yunani and homeopathy drugs and related matters. Third, practitioners of Ayurveda are not allowed to perform any surgery in India. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is A. 1 and 2 are correct. The third statement is wrong because just a couple of years back, the government of India did release a list of procedures on which the Ayurveda practitioners are also allowed to perform surgery. This led to a lot of protests by the IMA and other doctors who said that this should not be allowed, but the government stood by its stand. The reason why we are discussing this question is because the government of India has announced that they will soon be launching the Ayush visa. As you know, India anyways is one of the most favorite destinations from across the world for medical tourism. People from across the world come to India to get themselves treated at a low cost for a very effective treatment. And now we are trying to utilize our efficiency for Ayush treatment as well. The central government will soon introduce a specific Ayush visa category to boost medical tourism and a digital portal that will connect the medicinal plant farmers with the Ayush product manufacturers as well to give a boost to the economy. The Prime Minister who is in Gujarat and recently inaugurated the traditional medicine center in Jamnagar said that the government of India is now reaching out to the entire world which is in panic right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic and we want to share the benefits of Ayush throughout the world. The Prime Minister also gave an example how the blindness of a daughter of Kenya's ex-Prime Minister was cured in Kerala through an Ayurvedic treatment. And that is proof enough that we have technology and knowledge to give a cure to many diseases around the world. Next, question number two. Which of the following nations constitutions 20th amendment, also known as 20A, has been in the news recently? Pakistan, Nepal, Myanmar or Sri Lanka? The correct answer here is D. It is Sri Lanka. The reason why it is in the news is because a Sri Lankan Prime Minister, after ongoing protests in the country, has promised that he will repeal the 20th Amendment of the country's constitution and will bring back the clauses of the 19th Amendment and the 21st Amendment. The reason why he is doing it is because the 20th Amendment gave a lot of unlimited powers to the executive and to the president while abolishing the independent constitutional council for the parliamentary council. It gave the president the power to dissolve the parliament, remove the prime minister and even nominate the country's top judge while giving him legal immunity for all his actions. It even allowed those with dual citizenship to hold political office. In fact, this provision of allowing dual citizenship to hold office was because they wanted to make a family member a minister who had dual citizenship apart from the Sri Lankan citizenship as well. As you would have read in the news, Sri Lanka is amidst one of the worst economic crises in its history and the protests against the president and the prime minister are at an all-time high. Next, question number three. Consider the following statements with regards to P75 project. Number one. 
प्रोजेक्ट सेवेंटी फाइव इंटेंड्स टू बिल्ड सिक्स डीजल इलेक्ट्रिक अटैक सबमरीन ऑफ कलवरी क्लास दैट इज बेस्ड ऑन द स्कॉर्पिन क्लास विच आर बींग बिल्ड एट द एम डी एल दैट इज मजगा डॉक लिमिटेड सेकेंड सबमरीन वर्कशीर इज द लास्ट ऑफ द स्कॉर्पिन क्लास सबमरीन शू बी बिल्ड अंडर प्रोजेक्ट सेवेंटी फाइव and third the mzl has used indigenous technology for all the submarines to be built under project 75 which of these given statements is or are correct the correct answer here is a the first two statements are correct the third is wrong because the technology that we have been using under project 75 to build these diesel electric attack submarines has been imported from foreign countries including france spain russia etc the first two are correct The reason why we are discussing this question is because submarine Vagshir, which is the sixth submarine of Project Seventy Five, the last of this project, has just been launched and will now undergo real water sea trials. The article tells us that under P Seventy Five, the contract for six submarines was given to Mazgaon Dock on October six, two thousand and five. The delivery was to start from 2012, but because of delays, which are pretty common in these kind of projects, the delivery started much later on. The six submarines under this particular project include INS Kalvari, INS Khanderi, INS Karanj, INS Vela, INS Vagir, and now INS Vagshir, which is the sixth and the last one under P75. The government will now focus on P75 I project, which is an upgrade of the P75 project. The Vakshir submarine will be commissioned into the Indian Navy's Western Command after 12 to 18 months when the sea trials will come to an end. Next question number 4. Consider the following statements with regards to the Smart Cities mission. Number 1. The mission aims to develop 100 cities into self-sustaining urban developments. Second, the mission includes setting up integrated command and control center that is ICC for each of the smart cities. And third, During the pandemic these centers also served as war rooms for covid-19 management which of these given statements is or are correct the correct answer here is d since all the three given statements are correct the idea of smart cities is to have cities which are sustainable which have enough infrastructure which have good enough jobs so that people of india don't have to migrate from these cities to the big cities and don't burden its infrastructure Rather than that, there should be enough cities that are livable in India that have good enough infrastructure and jobs so that the people can stay back and earn their livelihood there itself. As per this article of the Hindu newspaper, the smart cities project include setting up integrated command and control center in each of these smart cities. As per the recent announcement by the government, the government said. that 80 out of the 100 of these cities already have their command centers being set up many of these command centers in fact were used as a war rooms during the covid-19 pandemic crisis these integrated command and control centers were initially aimed to control and monitor a lot of amenities such as water and power supply sanitation traffic movement building management city connectivity etc but since then the number of applications of these command centers have improved considerably as per the government these centers would have to act as a nerve centers for the operations management of the entire city they would also handle all the important functions of the government in the city including cctv surveillance led street lighting cameras air quality sensors smart parking systems electricity etc although the project was announced in 2015 it has faced a number of delays and the deadline has been extended multiple times now the period of implementation of the smart cities mission has been extended to june 2023 next question number 5 consider the following statements with regards to the freedom fighter veer kovar singh number 1 he was a chief organizer of the fight against the british in uttar pradesh second he belonged to a family of the ujjainia clan of the parma rajputs of jagdishpur third to honor his contribution to india's freedom movement the government of india issued a commemorative stamp on 23rd of april 1966 which of these given statements is or are correct the correct answer here is b the first statement is wrong because he was a chief organizer of the fight against the british in 1857 in the state of bihar and not in up he was a very prominent name in the 1857 struggle and i'm sure you might have read about him in the modern history books The reason why we are discussing this question is because the Bihar government has announced that they will celebrate Kovar Singh Jayanti as a grand event 
on the 23rd of April this year. In fact, the Union Home Minister Amit Shah will also attend this event in Bihar. This is a part of government's initiative of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav program to celebrate 75 years of Indian independence. Apart from the commemorative stamp that the government of India had published, in 1992, a university was established in Bhojpur under his name. Next, we have a previous year question from 2020. With reference to Indian elephants, consider the following statements. Number one, the leader of an elephant group is a female. Second, the maximum gestation period can be 22 months. Third, an elephant can normally go on calving, that means giving birth, till the age of 40 years only. And fourth, among the states in India, the highest elephant population is in Kerala. Which of these given statements is or are correct? Whenever there are questions with more than three statements, they become even more tricky. The correct answer here is A. One and two are correct. Third and fourth are wrong. The fourth statement is wrong because it is Karnataka that has the highest population of elephants in India and not Kerala. The reason why this question was asked actually was that that year, there was a report released by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change about the elephants in India and it had a lot of data. As for that report, Karnataka has the highest number of elephants in India followed by Assam and then Kerala. The first two given statements are correct. Next, we have a fact of the day and today we will be discussing about the life of the ninth Sikh Guru that is Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur. The entire country is celebrating 401st birth anniversary of Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur. And as part of the celebrations, even Prime Minister Narendra Modi will give an address from the Red Fort today itself. He is remembered for his supreme sacrifice that he did for the Hindu community. He was a contemporary of the Mughal ruler Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb was forcefully converting a lot of people into Islam and that is when Guru Tegh Bahadur stood up, especially to protect the Kashmiri Pandits who were being oppressed by the Mughals. There is a famous story that Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur was approached by Kirpa Ram who was a Kashmiri Brahmin who sought his protection from the local chieftains who wanted him to convert to Islam. Guru Tegh Bahadur assured him and his group that they will be protected and when the Mughals come, they should tell the Mughals that first go and convert Guru Tegh Bahadur and only then other people will get converted. This was considered as a challenge by Aurangzeb who tortured the Sikh Guru to death and beheaded him at Chandni Chowk along with his three companions that is Bhai Mati Das, Bhai Sati Das and Bhai Dayalji. Delhi's famous Gurdwara that is Gurudwara Shish Gan Sahib was set up on the same site where he was executed in 1784. This is it for today's daily quiz video. Thank you so much for watching.